run to the cathedral of Santa Maria in Bruckneplatz, buy one of the plain half-length candles and take back four Klubecks in change, light it in the sacristy, say a brief rosary, then go to Mendel's and get me a courtesan au chocolat. If there's any money left, give it to the crippled shoeshine boy. Right away, sir. everyone, today we will recreate a very whimsical shoe pastry, Cartesan au Chocolat. This pastry was featured in Wes Anderson movie, The Grand Budapest Hotel. If you have seen the movie, you no doubt are in love with this pretty pastry for Mendel's Bakery, carefully crafted by the lovely Agatha. I'm just happy to see them. This cream-filled pastry not only beautiful, but it also look regal and elegant. And the fun part is how you interpret them and make them your own. I hope you guys will love it too. So let's get started. We will start with the luscious cream patissier so it has time to chill before we use it. So in a medium bowl, combine the corn flour along with sugar, cocoa powder, and 50 grams of milk. Mix well. We are not going to add in the egg yolk now. Cause when the egg yolk and sugar sit too long without being mixed, the water in yolk is absorbed by the sugar and you will end up with a hard clumpy mess. Then in a medium saucepan, gently heat the 200 grams of milk, add in the dark chocolate, continue stirring until all the chocolate melted. Once the chocolate melted, turn off the heat, combine the egg yolk into the corn flour mixture, mix very well, and then slowly pour this mixture into the hot milk mixture, whisking constantly to temper the egg mix. And then I will turn on the stove to medium low heat and continue cook until the mixture starts to thicken. Allow the pastry cream to come to a boil and after you see the first bubbles break the surface, lower the heat and let it cook further for about 1-2 to two minutes. So that the cornstarch will cook well and you won't be left with a starch flavor. Take it off from the heat, add in the rum. You can use vanilla extract if you want. I just feel rum match perfectly with custard. Your custard should be nice and smooth. I always like to sift mine to make sure there's no lumpy at all. Once the pastry cream is cooked, spread it in a shallow pan. Cover it with a cling wrap. Press the plastic down. Make sure the plastic touch the surface of the custard to prevent the custard skin from forming on top. Let the custard chill in the fridge for at least one hour. In the meantime, we can continue with our lovely shoe pastry. It's not really necessary, but I would recommend to sift the flour before you add it into the boiling water to make sure there are no lumps in the flour to begin with. Then for the dough, in a medium saucepan, combine the butter along with water and salt. Bring it to a simmer. Then turn off the heat, and I will pour in the sifted flour in one go. Mix immediately. Make sure that you mix it fairly well, and there's no lumps visible. And then, over medium low heat, I will continue cook the dough until it comes together. It's from a cohesive ball. You also can see that the dough leaving a thin film at the bottom of the saucepan. Take it off from the heat. And the next step is wait for the dough to cool down or until warm. So the way I prefer to cool down my dough is to place the dough in a bowl. And then flatten the dough along the sides of the bowl. This increases the surface area so it cools down faster and more water evaporates as you do this. After your dough is cool enough, now we can start adding the eggs. The amount of eggs added is variable. 
To prevent the dough from being too runny, I like to have all the eggs whisk well in a bowl first. Then I will add it a little at a time, mixing each addition until I get the right consistency. What you're looking for is a dough that looks glossy but still thick, can hold its shapes, and pipeable. You can do the feed test. If you stir and scoop the dough with a rubber spatula and slowly lift the spatula straight up, the dough should form a V hanging shape like this. That's what we are looking for. Once the dough is ready, I will place the dough in a piping bag with a 1.2 cm round nozzle. Then pipe the dough into large, medium, and small sized dollops on a pan lined with a parchment paper. Remember to hold the pastry bag and tip upright when you are piping and you're not doing it at an angle. This way, your shoe pastry will rise perfectly upwards and not be lopsided. Place the large and medium size on the first pan and the small size on the second pan as they will cook more quickly. And don't forget to use a damp finger to flatten the apex or any points so it will be easier to stacking them later. Some recipe call for shoe pastry to be baked at two different temperatures. I prefer to bake it at one constant temperature for a perfect shoe pastry every single time. Bake them in a preheated 180 degrees Celsius oven. And since shoe pastry relies on steam to expand while baking, it is very important to not open the door until the shoe pastry shells have set properly. As soon as they came out from the oven, using sharp knife, prick each bottom of the shell to allow the steam to escape and dry out the shell faster. Let them cool completely on a cooling rack. And in the meantime, we can prepare the simple fluffy buttercream and the icing glaze for the decoration. Instead of using American style buttercream, which is tend to be overly sweet, I like to use shortening based buttercream with a bit of condensed milk to balance the sweetness of the icing glaze. So in a medium bowl, mix the shortening along with butter and condensed milk until well combined, add in the rum, and whisk together for about 5 minutes until it becomes really light and smooth. Place half portion into the piping bag with a star nozzle, Color the rest with blue color and place it into another piping bag with a round nozzle. And to make the icing glaze, simply combine all the ingredients. The idea is to aim for a thicker consistency. Don't be tempted to add too much milk, otherwise, the glaze will slip right off of your pastry ball. I will divide the glaze into each color portions. Add food coloring for each portions. Remember, always cover the icing glaze to prevent from drying out. Alright guys, everything is well prepared. It's time to assemble our whimsical pastry ball. So first, I will place the cold cream patissier in a piping bag with a long round nozzle. Pipe into its size portions of a pastry ball. And because our glaze is quite thick, I prefer to use my small spatula to apply the glaze on my shoe rather than dip into it. 
glaze the pastry wall with each color of the icing glaze light purple for the large pale mint green for the medium and soft pink for the small size Allow the icing to dry a bit And then, you can decorate the balls with filigree of white icing glaze as desired And to assemble them, we will need some edible glue to stack each pastry ball. I using this leftover white icing glaze as a glue, dye it with blue color, and add half teaspoon of the icing sugar to make it thicker. So we will start by place the large purple ball at the bottom. Pipe a dollop of the blue icing glaze on top of the purple ball. Then I will take a medium mint green ball and press it gently on top of the large one so it stick in place. Pipe the blue icing again as a glue and finally place the smallest pink ball on top of the medium green ball. I will decorate the joint space with the blue buttercream. And the bottom part with white buttercream. Then make a white star buttercream on top. And place a single cocoa bean on the star as garnish. It's so beautiful and elegant pastry tower. These pastry are best eaten the day you made them with a little bit twist and tweak. This whole thing is not overly sweet, happily colored, and playful decorated. I'm happy when I first saw it in a movie, happy when I was making it, and happy when I was finally able to taste it. I hope you guys are inspired as much as I am. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. No, 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 no. Hey, naughty boy.